Right, hi everyone. Um, we've come to this middling section now of the afternoon's events. Uh, there's three of us here. We're all Engadget editors. Uh, my name's Matt Smith. I'm a senior associate editor for Engadget. Next to me is Nicole. Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm the associate editor and I'm from the San Francisco. Hi, I'm uh, James. I'm a senior editor in the UK. So uh, I'm based in Japan as well. So there's two British accents here, but we're from all over the globe. So hopefully we have some interesting things to say. This session is actually going to be Engadget editors do show and tell. So we picked out our favorite things out there on the floor. I'm sure probably some of you guys have been sat there most of the day watching all these panels. So we just wanted to introduce some of the more interesting things we found out there today. And obviously, you can come back tomorrow and take a look if you run out of time today. So first up, James, would you like to? Yep, I got these guys. These, uh, we've just had a talk on wearables. So these are kind of quite uh, relevant. These are the pivot head. Smart. They're basically they look like a pair of sunglasses because they are a pair of sunglasses, but they've got a HD camera, uh, full 1080p, and it's right here in the bridge. The pivot head of kind of they've already got a model out, so this this is actually a, one of the only existing prototypes of the second model. It's called Pivot Head Smart. Yeah, I know that we've got the pivot head guy watching us carefully to make sure yep, we don't like, break it. So, um, <laughs> but, but basically they're, they're the same as the original. So it's like an eight megapixel photo camera. You can like I say you can do 1080p but they've got these um, extra sort of modular bits which kind of clip on, they're like a mini USB. Um, you can put them on the ends here uh, and you can add, this one's like got a memory card slot on it so you can add to the existing eight gigs of memory uh, with whatever you've got in the, in the card. You can add another one which has got extra battery life so full 2,500 milliamps. I mean that makes a lot of sense when you're going yeah. to be doing you know, adventure action. Yeah. So, and snowboarding. then you can just have two and swap them out, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then also there's a wireless one as well that does Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so you can kind of stream like through. Oh, cool. Appar yeah, apparently the device itself can actually do um, like live streaming, so you can literally yeah. broadcast what you're looking at across as the world. As you're doing it, yeah. Right, yeah. And also, obviously, they, they've got sunglass functionality. Ah, oh, sunglass functionality. <laughs> I've heard about that. It's quite new. I mean, these are particularly apt because we're seeing like uh, mobile phone makers do the same thing. All this kind of, oh, brilliant. Oh, he's got putting your I, I don't know. No, I don't break the guy wincing. That I'm, I'm going to break them. <laughs> Sorry, no. They're, but they do look rather dashing as well. I think yeah. Uh, well, they look like normal sunglasses, which I think is a major plus, really. Absolutely. You want, you want something that you can just wear. That you can right. just wear and not look awkward. Exactly. And then obviously, you know. <laughs> Apart from the face. Um, yeah, well. And the camera bit's kind of, it's not too conspicuous. No. Brilliant. Fine. So, yeah. That was the Pivot Head Smart. Awesome. Um, I have a very simple looking gadget. It's basically the Karma Mobile Hotspot. And that seems like a very pedestrian item, but it's actually a very interesting feature to it. You can actually share your mobile hotspot up to eight people. And um, you pay $14 per gigabyte. But as soon as you share it with someone, you get 100 megabytes free. And the person that hooks on to your mobile hotspot also gets 100 megabytes of free data. So um, it's a sort of very karmic, hippie way. Sounds way super West Coast American. Very San Francisco <laughs> concept. Did you just um, show it to the, the camera so everyone can see uh, So yeah, there it is. It's a small little um, 2.6 by 2.6 footprint. So it's very small and lightweight, what, around two ounces or so. It's really thin, isn't it? It's very thin. It has around 68 hours of battery life once you charge it up. Um, and yeah, that's basically the idea. You know, you get 14 gigabytes, you, know, you pay $14 per gigabyte, but then you can, it's, and you may not ever pay again because if you share it up to like, you know, What about people, people like me that don't have any friends? Or? Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> ah, <okay>. well, <laughs> leading into this, this is kind of like the anti-karma. Can you like game it if you've got like multiple devices? You can kind of like log. Ooh. No, no, because um, each, per each person that um, hooks up to the hotspot has to pay their own data. Right, so they pay, but they get like a kickback. For they, get, they get like 100 megabytes. Right, so you can't game it data. by just like no. logging on all So you, you never pay for other people's data. Like uh, they, they, pay, they, go, they, they pay their own way. They get their own 100 megabytes of free data. Um, but How long has have, it been out? Because it's been out for... It's been out for a while. And it uses, this is sort of the bad part of it. It uses ClearWire's WiMAX network, which is kind of dying. But this week... They just announced they're going with Sprint's LTE network, which is I've far heard of more. Sprint. Even as a yes, Brit, I've heard, heard of Sprint. Sprint. Yes, yeah. so which is far more widespread, a much faster network, and I think they're going to start implementing the Sprint LTE service next year on April or May or so. so like, yeah. I spoke to them earlier as well because I was saying I was curious, obviously, if it was going to work um, outside of of the US, which obviously currently it doesn't mm -hmm. because obviously it's dependent on the cellular yeah, network. Sprint but out. I think. Um, they were suggesting that that's obviously something that... He was saying that if you opened it up in an airport, you might get your 100 megabytes free pretty easily. 
So wow, that's pretty good. And I mean, do, do we know how many West Coast editors using it? Do you know if anyone's actually made the investment? Oh, I'm not sure if anyone made the investment. The, the, each mobile hotspot itself, this is, the hardware itself is around $69. Right, so the first, that for first, the first The first buy, the first hardware buy is $69. But, you know, depending on if you have a lot of friends, if you share your hotspot a lot in public spaces, you might never have to pay for data again. Unless you have no friends like me. Unless you have no friends. Right. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> Well, I'll go next then. So this is uh, my favorite one. This is from um, 3D Systems. Now this is not a staple gun. This is the Sense handheld 3D printer. So, uh, 3D scanner. Scanner. 3D scanner. 3D scanner. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> Fooled at the first hurdle. So um, it's probably best if we uh, show it. Do you mind scanning me? Uh, oh, oh sure. <laughs> All right. Sure. How could uh, we brought the uh, tablet as well. So the great thing about this device is it connects through USB. So you can actually connect it to Surface or other tablets running Windows. And do you want to just like gradually rotate around this handsome head. Okay. And you should be able to see on the screen, it's... Um... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the kind of the gist of it. So the important thing here is that you're not limited by a normal 3D limited area scanner. So in fact, it goes up by 10 by 10 feet, I think. So it's quite a big area that you'll be able to capture there. And um, yeah, so it's very good for faces. You can sort of see it. It's a little yeah. pixelated. You have, to, you have to get back a little bit, a and little then bit. hopefully it should. Oh, there you go. There you go. Very good. Am I looking good? It's that smile is insincere. <laughs> <laughs> All my smiles are insincere. So the clever thing is, once you press the scan button, we're not fully trained 3D scanning artists, but once you press the button, you actually paint in the 3D image, and you just take parts and parts, and it kind of sticks them together, attaches them together. Then you're given the kind of file you need to print it in a 3D printer. So again, um, yeah, I, I like the idea that it's this portable, the idea that you can do it wherever you want. You can scan whatever you want. With just a tablet and a yeah. scanner. Well, I've seen them. Um, they've got, obviously, the booth is over there right at the back, isn't it? And they've got lots of figurines of, I guess, of people that they've scanned. Or is, yeah. that, is that a separate thing? Because it looks like they've got another thing that's with a plate, and you stand on it. And I think that might, yeah, I think that's the more typical way that people do scan. But could you do a full? body like that with this, if you've got the patience? Or I think so. I mean, that's what they were printing. That's, the notion is you'll be able to kind of capture things more instantly. I know one of the guys at the store was talking about uh, creating a statue of um, himself and his pregnant wife. Like, so before their baby's born, they'll have a picture of um, yeah, the couple getting ready to have their child. And that idea that it's kind of it adds a sentimental touch to sure. all those 3D figurines of yourself <laughs> right. that we all own, obviously. Because they all look, we were saying they, they all look slightly awkward, don't they? People just stood there. Being yeah. scanned. I think that's more, yeah, I'm just not very photogenic, and that's the major <laughs> issue there. But, but all the other scans of other people, I was saying, it's, it's kind of <laughs> a lot of people that are obviously on a conference exhibition show floor yeah, yeah. Being, being scanned. In, you know, I mean, that's an important thing to add as well. So um, there's, you've probably already seen people on the floor doing this. So you can actually go out there on the floor, and they'll, uh, they'll whip up a scan of you, and you can take that file away and uh, do what you want with it. So you just get the STL file or whatever yeah, it is, right. and then you could go over to one of the other 3D printers uh, yeah. that are here. I mean, I'm not, I haven't done it myself, so I'm not sure if it's going to take uh, is a bit of money. But um, commercially yeah. available? So I think they're, they're aiming for a launch before Christmas, and the price is $400, which is super cheap when it comes to 3D scanning, but obviously that's a yeah, tricky it's price a little price for dabblers. But I mean, I'm not sure, there looks like there's several millionaires in the audience, but <laughs> they yeah. should be fine. As, Reminds me of these. I think uh, these are two nine nine for the. These are going to go out on Indiegogo for an, uh, oh. early adopters, right? And then I, I believe there's going to be a proper commercial launch in the new year. So, so these will yeah, you're be. You're going to hear a bit more about those, I think, in the next few weeks or so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but uh, like I said, these are, are just still very much at the prototype stage, though, at the moment. So. Yeah. I mean, um, and if you're interested in um, these wearable sunglasses, you should check out our review of the original model, which is obviously on the site. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. There's a very funny video where um, our other editor, Terence, he just he kind of did the whole review while wearing them. Um, so yeah, it's quite a nice, interesting one to watch. And this one uh, still is currently available. It's available right now. And when, when is the LTE version? LTE version is going to come out next year. So and and the, the same price, do we know? Yeah, should be around the same price. So 69 bucks for, for the hardware, hardware and then $14 per, per gigabyte. Brilliant. Okay, pretty good. So yeah, this is our show and tell session. Obviously, there's plenty more there's stuff. There's plenty more stuff. And there's also lots of stuff we couldn't actually bring on stage. So. Yeah, so we yeah. kind of, we're, we're, as you've seen, there's kind of bikes, Oculus Rift, all this other stuff. We would love to have got that up here, but it's kind of slightly less practical, so. Yeah, but that's about it for us. Um, thanks very much for listening. I hope you have time to check out everything you want on the show floor. And stay tuned, because we have the next session coming up in just a few minutes.